This OIFC TV adventure is brought to you by The Ocean Isle Fish Company, located on Ocean Isle Beach at the base of the bridge. Come be a part of the show and enjoy on-the-water dining while the fishing fleet offloads fresh catch daily. New sushi bar now open. The Wing and Fish Company, located on Main Street in the historic district of downtown Shalot, providing the area's largest selection of craft beers, chicken wing flavors, and fresh seafood from the OIFC fleet. The Swamp Park in Ocean Isle Beach, North Carolina, featuring an intense and challenging nature-oriented zipline and adventure park. New for 2019, Get Dirty ATV Tours. Freeman Boatworks, Redefining Limits. And these other fine sponsors. back again another edition of OIFC TV and you can tell by the apparel it's a little chilly outside today this is I would say is our last trip of the year we're getting toward the end of the year but uh, I got revenge in mind this is a beatdown opportunity there, there's there's never a last trip of the year maybe of the calendar year but the, right. the fishing season just keeps right on going just depends on what we're doing and where we're going but um, you said it a beatdown man let me tell you something <clears throat> We have been tournament fishing hard for the past six months, and I am mentally exhausted. I'm so mad at King Mackerel. King I, Mackerel I, tournament I, fishing. I, yep. Yeah, I, I, I want to catch them, and I want them to pay today. That's right. So all through the year, we work our butts off competing in these tournaments. Sometimes we have success. Sometimes we do not. It always seems like they're just a mythical fish, a lot of times anyway. And it's just old King Mackerel. Most, I mean, they, they, they're not that smart. Yeah, we're, you're trying to outsmart something that doesn't have a brain, so it doesn't uh, usually work out too well. And I mean, it's been it's been a frustrating year um, for me, anyways. I mean, you had a, a great year, but um, you no. know, to, well, no, a, a better than me, we, anyways. We caught about a few. That? We catch. We have moments of greatness, and then mostly moments yeah. or, or periods of of uh, depression yeah yeah well the, the deal is so why why can we go out here and take some revenge it's late in the year it's cold outside this is the time of year the king mackerel really really get balled mm -hmm. up schooled up so you can land on them i mean it can be a lot of fun that's right well, as the air gets cool here in the carolinas uh it starts in october but really november is the month when the fish will really pack up into balls and um, what you're looking for specifically is a temperature gradient of some sort something that's going to be from the mid 60s to the low 70s some sort of a gradient in that range tight gradient and then structure if you can get those two together most of the time you're going to find the fish yeah and of course the one factor that's always involved is bait fish and if there's bait fish around most certainly there will be king mackerel around but yep. um you know what's kind of cool about this deal here is that you know you can land on a school that's got 10 pounders or you can land on a school that's got 30 pounders mm -hmm. and 40 pounders 
hunters, and that would, you know, obviously. That's what I'm hoping yeah, for today. That, that, that would be a lot more fun. We had, we had, so we had some pogies or some menhaden that uh, really you can't even catch them now. Or it's very hard because it got so cold. But I had some back from October when we were tournament fishing. Had a few, about a couple, two or three dozen victims still left. So uh, I talked to them this morning. They said they wanted one last chance at uh, at glory. So I've got the live bait on board, which if the big fish are around, that could be a cool thing. So Absolutely. Well, we got a beautiful, beautiful day for it. We'll be able to move around and try to locate these fish. And uh, yep. we got we got the boat to do it in. So yeah, We're, we're going to be at about 85 feet of water. So we're going to shoot out there and uh, see what happens. So let's go get it on. Yes, sir. We've arrived on scene. It is flat, calm. It is absolutely beautiful. And the uh, commercial fleet is here. These guys are commercial fishing to sell these fish. We are going to be catch and release fishing. Hoping to have a big time. So stand by. Looks good. All right, so this is a just a basic king mackerel rig. Well, not too basic. It's got a skirt on it, but same concept as any of them. Um, for a live bait right here. So you just get you about a, you know, anywhere from an 18 to 24 inch leader, somewhere in that range. And a couple treble hooks, number four treble hooks. And we're gonna be putting a pogey on this. And um, if you wanna talk, you know, details, <laughs> it's, uh, it's pretty important that your rig size matches the size of the bait that you have. So for instance, you wouldn't wanna have you know, two hooks spread out this far if your baits are only that big. Or vice versa, you don't want to have your hooks set this far apart if your bait's that big. So you try to match, you know, make your rig length the, between the hooks about the same distance as what you believe your, the, how big your bait is. And this one does have a little duster on it, just a little, little mylar skirt here to add some flash to it, maybe get some attention. And um, that's pretty much it. It's just a really simple deal to, to get into this kind of fishing. Get a bait out of the aquarium. Wow, beautiful baits. Yeah. This is a pogey. Minhaden, same thing. There's a king mackerel here. I'm marking them. I believe they'll eat it. I'm marking the king mackerel. They're here. I'm marking. They are here. So you hook them through the nose and then just stick the hook in them somewhere, the back hook in them somewhere else. That's it, man. They're gonna chomp down on that. So once we get our, our baits hooked on and um, pitch them out of there, we're just using real, real light tackle here. We got 20 pound test and um, a little, these are 20 toriums right here. Most folks use 30s. I, I like the 20s, they're just easier to handle. And um, you know, real, real light action rods and we're using real light drag. So when a fish bites, he's gonna hopefully do that except Keep going for a long time. That's that's when they you hear people talk about big king mackerel calling smokers. That's uh whoop whoop whoop. Oh, thought I was getting a bite. My bait got excited. Uh, you know he's gonna smoke off the line, just burn it down, and that's what you want him to do. You want him to run far, tire him out, work him back. He may run a couple times and and just gradually work him back. But this is not about how strong you are, how powerful. It's it's all about finesse. So. Just let the, the equipment do its job. All right, we'll put out, I don't know, three or four lines probably. And get to it. We got it. That was good. Mm -hmm. 
That's what we were waiting on. Oh boy. Smoking it. Mm. Now what should happen, we should start getting some more bites. Oh, there got him on right here. here. I got one on right here too. Got him all. Damn, what'd I just say? That's the way it works. You get one to bite. You get one chewing, and the rest of them are gonna go. Well, I want to hold the one that's running. Get my, let me get my pants back on. Dang. We got too many fish, not enough bodies. Get down. God, awesome. Why can't it always be like this? All right, we'll turn the clickers off. Oh, God, forgot about that one. Oh, crap, this one's passing the boat. We gotta turn the clickers off. Nothing like this. Like we said, just a good old beat down. Come out here and Exact some revenge for all those trips where they made it real hard. What would, what would really make this cool is if we could catch a, one big one today. A little 40 pounder would be cool. A lot of times we will see those fish this time of year, but I imagine most of them are going to be 15 ish, 15 to 20. But you saw that we. We were sat there for about 15 minutes and missed one fish, but anyway, got the first fish on. Very common when you're in a school. You get one fish on, and then all of a sudden all the rest of them are gonna bite. One fish feeding will inspire the other fish to feed. That's what it is. That's what it is. Keep them tight. I gotta get more lines out, man. <laughs> Don't cut my fish off, I got a good one on back here. All right, here, look. You need to keep this one tight too, all right? You got those three to keep tight. I gotta get more baits out. How's that? All right, gotta be totally skilled to do this. Three fish at once. Rotate. Fishing. Don't, don't lose any of those fish. Fishing efficiently. All right, this one's like, we take a line a lot. All right, now you guys are gonna mess up. All right, this one's gonna go here. Uh oh, this one's gonna come around. All right, you're up on this one. No, 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 no. I'm busy. I still haven't got the button my pants back yet. I'm busy. I gotta get. There we go. The old cigar menu out here. Got one of my cigar minnows thawed out. They love a dead cigar minnow. Call that a popsicle. It's still frozen. Which way are we drifting? <laughs> I don't know. Anywhere? No. Anyway? It doesn't look like it at all. All right, here we go. We're gonna pull them up here and get them. Get... All right, I got, and okay, now I got my two other fish on and I got two other baits out. I missed one. Tournament's over, boys. Good fish. Let 
That was the one we came to catch. Awesome. Are you gonna be able to get a hold of them? Yeah, I think so. Phew. Maybe. Oh, pretty upset. Is it possible to put it in gear? Can I put it in gear? Yeah, I don't know what your other fish. Oh, hang on. Yeah, give me a second. I can put it in gear. All right. That's all oh, I got and for I broke you. the line. With him in my hand. He's not as big as I thought, but he's a good fish. It's like a 30 pounder, isn't it? Yeah. That's them. Good fish. All righty. Well, send him back. Good. Got it. There we go. Turn that 30 into 40 one day. Good start. Good start. Back on it. I got. I threw that other bait out a minute ago. We missed another bite. And then uh, we've got this, just this three flurry. This feels like a heavy fish here. This could be a big one. There he is. There. There's, he's on that metal rod. There you go. That's the rod I just threw out a second ago. Is this a dead bait? Nope, fly bait. Oh, he's coming, coming at you. Look at him passing Look the boat. Look at him go. Yeah, Look at him go. He's going. About to pass us right under the boat. Well, we've, that's the one we've already had on. That's the one that's been on. The only one that's not bit is up front. Okay. This little Ron Reel setup, Barrett's guy. This is his equipment here. It's kind of nice. It's a Torium 20. With uh, he put the Shimano Travala jigging rod actually on it, which uh, it's a 6.6. Uh, medium heavy is what it is, but you but can I, see it's got a lot of bend. The medium I light. The butt, I cut the butts off of them. TVC 66M, so it's a medium. You cut the, you shorten them up. Yeah. And I put a. Uh, these do not come with the with the gimbal butt like that. Okay, so you cut them and then added the gimbal on them. That's right. kind of custom to uh, make them kind of. I guess he's got uh, his daughters. Both of his daughters, young, uh, fishes with him. And so these rods are a lot lighter and easier for them to handle. It's a nice fish there. It's going to be about a 27, 8, 9. Oh, dang it. I'm in the, uh, I'm in the upper 20s here on this one. I got a, a 15 right here. And another line. All right, let's do it. Make a release. Oh, release. I like that release. Didn't even have to flip grip him. There you go. That was in fact the perfect release. Pretty fish, released at boat side. Didn't have to mess with him. All right. Here you go. Little All guy. Right. Look at that. That's a cute one. Uh-oh, we gone slack here. No, I'm in the, it's in this line right here. Oh, that's not the fish. Fishing All right, boat. here we go. You, you will notice that when we're releasing these fish, the way we like to do it, it's, it's not that we're being mad at them and just chunking them in. If you throw them in head first, they get that rush of water past their gills. That kind of helps them get going again, get revived. So that's why we're kind of just torpedoing them into the water. Okay, let's do this again. Yeah. So they didn't touch the live bait, th I mean the uh, dead bait through that. I threw out the cigar mano and never got a nibble. Interesting. A little 15, 16, 17 pounder. All right, Barrett, I got him right here for you to tail him. <sighs> well, he's not. Or you can just grip flip him right over the side. So this tool we use is kind of cool. You don't usually, you can do it without having to bring the fish in the boat. One hook. It's all about getting a hold of the hook. Once you get that hook in, that, in the, uh, the gun, 
You got him. Boo. He gone. Never had to touch him. Got him right here. He's getting himself straight. Yeah. Goodbye. See ya. He's like, what the heck just happened? All right, a little kingfish flurry. We are marking the fish right now. You can see them marking up. That's, that's what we're looking at here. So the fish are hanging around 30 feet, probably right on top of that thermocline. So we'll just bump it back in gear here. And uh, should be able to get bit here shortly again. If I can get this bait to swim down, down and away from the boat, and they will usually get eight. Problem is when they swim to the boat. Go on, little buddy. He ain't going away. You need him to run. Come on, guy. Don't come back to the boat. Go away. Go away. Gotta go away. There he is. Whoa. Well, that was pretty cool. Got him. Oh, he dropped it. Look, look at him swimming. Oh, he's, he's right there. It. He's he in the water. It. I got him that time. Ha ha. Put that bait out there swimming around with no pressure on him at all. Like he's free swimming. A lot of times that will make them bite. This one's going to cause a problem here. Now, theoretically, we should. There's a good chance we get bites on these other ones. There he is, right on. Got him on behind you. Almost <laughs> like I know what I'm talking about. Every now and again. See there? They, nope, they were dropping right. the bait. That one right here hit the bait three times before he yeah. got it. The problem is there's no drift out here at all, zero. So we're not moving. When you got good drift, then you baits kind of stay back there behind you. But right now they're just sinking. Like I so said, the dead bait when we're stopped like this. Barrett, this one right here, you need to turn the corner. When we're stopped like this, your dead baits are just, your dead baits will theoretically, seemingly do better when you got some movement so they're, Working through the water right now, they're just dead. Dead in the water. Whoa! Grip flip. If you can unhook them without having to handle them in the boat, that is preferred. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, we get it. If you, oh, I, that second hook is in his tongue. Come on now, this is gonna suck. Yeah, I got you, it does. It is, it, it does, I know, it's bad. If, if you hadn't bitten it, then you wouldn't be in this situation. But let's make the best of it. All right, since we're in this together, let's make the best of it. Oh, he's bleeding a little bit. I think I had him in the tongue. That gives him his best chance to live anyway. I never touched him. He was hooked kind of in the underside and the gill when I popped that out. He started bleeding a little bit, but maybe he'll make it. He's got a heck of a lot better chance in that water than he does in this boat. So, do you think I can do that again? Here he comes. Yeah, you're right, that is a great white. A little one. A little baby great white. 
Let's see if I can get him to eat these freaking cigar manners. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> eat that. Look at that thing. That's pretty. Yeah, that is a great white. You're right, Barrett. That is not a Mako. <laughs> we were in there kingfishing. Kingfishing slowed down a little bit. I got a big ping on my, uh, my sonar 100 yards away. So we picked up, we ran over, we identified and located the culprit. It was that great big white shark right there. We got some good video of him. I think I scared him off. Now we can come back in here and we can uh, get back to some kingfishing here. We just had to go over there and kind of, you know, let him know we were working this area and then he needed to go elsewhere. So we'll see if we can get back to him now. <laughs> it's all about that bait. You got to get that bait to swim down. If he'll go, you'll get bit. That's crazy. If he'll run, you'll get bit. Get on it, little buddy. Get on it. Get on it, little buddy. Get on it. Yeah, we're marking them now. They're they're up under us good now. All right, folks. This didn't take long to. Uh, didn't take long to get this action. Pretty much accomplished what we wanted to. We left the dock this morning. We said that we wanted to uh, come out here and exact a little bit of revenge. It's a lot of this is confidence building, reminding ourselves that in fact, we do know how to catch fish. So for, for beginners out there, people that are just getting into this, there's no better way to learn. You got to learn. You can't, there's no other way to learn than to fish when there are a lot of fish. Because to try to learn in a situation where you don't get many bites, it's impossible. So you've got to see a lot of fish. And so for all you guys out there that, that are aspiring to become better fishermen or even competitive fishermen, you, uh, particularly the ones that that hang up their rods and reels and pull out their deer hunting guns and bows in November, you got you got to come and train. You've got to come and train. And this is November, I would say, would be the best month to do it. You're going to get the most numbers and best quality of numbers. Get me, hand me the best quality of fish. So let's let this guy go. Uh-oh, your arm's long enough. I got a lip gap, man. I can get him. One more time. Take him up a little higher. More that way. There you go. It's a little easier. That's what that's for. Gotcha. Flip grip. So we're just trying not to hurt these fish because we're going to be letting them go. Uh oh, uh oh, Barrett's fish is up under the boat. So there's to another episode of OIFC TV. Little fella, we're going to let him go. Hopefully, we'll see this guy about 20 pounds from now. I'll drop him head first. Woo. There he goes. All right, OFC TV out. Still catching. <laughs>